Podcast. The podcast beyond World of Warcraft. Welcome everybody to hey. the sixth episode of Mocha Season Two. Is this season six? two. Is the sixth baby boy? Yeah. And you know we have somebody who I, I think this is the third third time we have it on a chat because you know we first started you know back in BFA you know you you were you were around but not really that much around yeah. but things have changed then we got on you know the the, the first season of the Mocast and now for the third goddamn time please give a round welcome to Mr. Dalaran Gaming hello what up hello 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 how's everybody doing well we're, we're doing fine man but please tell us how it I mean, was the, I mean the viewers I mean the audience yeah. that's the important yeah not, that, not you man. man I know but it's sometimes you know I just feel like you know I kind of put myself in center but I, I was going to ask directly off the back because I just got this information it's breakthrough how was it Mr. Dell as a gamer and content creator to wake up at 7 a.m in the morning <laughs> oh it was not as bad but uh, it's weird because I find that I just have way too much. Uh, there's so much to do in the day if you can wake up early with right. how busy I usually am. And I got everything done and it's not even, it wasn't even like 12 p.m. And it's like, well, what do I do with my time now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a nice feeling, it's, right? It's definitely better than the, uh, the last week that I've had where I'm waking up at like 4 p.m. And I'm like, I got to stream in an hour. That's really, really bad. Oh, well, uh, when you have, like, I know we talked about this last time about, you know, schedule and stuff. And uh, I, I, I see you're, you're still sticking to your, your streaming schedule and all of that. But you didn't really have, like, this YouTube posting videos type schedule. Not really at the time. But we'll get into that. My, my, my first curiosity was, because this was something really, really important back then, was, like, you basically at the time didn't really think about too much on you know taking some time off you know for yourself you know just unwinding a little bit and i know like following you on twitter and stuff or maybe getting some notifications on the discord i know you did take some time off eventually from time to time. How, how is that working out for you are you still like that work a fucking holic all the day or are you are you getting a little bit of re relaxation in so I never really took like a full, like complete, like a week or two break, but I did try to make my schedule a little bit easier on myself by taking Sundays off, at least from streaming. So I'm still doing the whole YouTube, still doing the uh, editing, and I'm still pretty busy some days, but having one less day to stream does give me enough of recuperation to keep this madness rolling you know what i mean yeah I pull back just a little just to keep this train rolling just a little longer i am gonna have to figure something out at a later time maybe actually like a full two week break uh at some point but it does give me now enough of uh freedom to just do what i do and smooth these things out so i did take steps in the right yeah, direction yeah. for my personal health but I probably could have done more, but you know, baby steps, we'll start here, we'll see where it goes from there. Sure. It's how I'm looking at it. Sure, mm. sure. Speaking as a true rogue, man, he, he mentioned you want to take off take time off for recuperate. You know, you know, you know <laughs> recuperate flame. Did you catch that early on, man? Nah, I used to play warrior, man. <laughs> but dude, it's like the best thing you could you can ever do, like taking it baby steps, right? Uh, I wasn't expecting like, I don't know, maybe a week or two weeks off. I mean, that sounds like a proper fucking vacation, if you ask me. But I remember you mentioning that. Oh, it's, it's just it's just everybody around me, like Gildy's yeah. um, girlfriend, uh, family. They were expecting like a two week break or something. Ah, like that. right. And right, it's just right. I know that's just not. I it's it's like it's like when you it's like when you go to the gym regularly and then you just skip a day or two and it's so difficult to get back into it. I tried to kind of give myself as much of a break so I didn't completely obliterate like the yeah. the the progress we were because it feels because I still have like this I wouldn't call it a fear but it, it's kind of like a a worry in the back of my head that if I were to somehow lax on the way that I've been running things too much I'm just gonna lose it all altogether so I just I I wanted to at least you know take a baby step to kind of reassure myself that yes i'm still doing what i'm doing but with now a little bit more breather sure we'll kind of see see where it goes from there but yeah, everybody else around me were expecting like a bigger break for <laughs> health and whatnot but it's it's something that maybe, maybe people don't understand yeah no it's it's a little bit of a because i i guess the way that it is that is actually a good point it is uh, something that's 
I mean, it's so weird to say like, you know, oh, doing YouTube and playing video games all day and streaming it, you wouldn't understand because it just sounds like it sounds bad compared to people with like real jobs and like actual struggles of, you know, waking up at seven in the morning. That's the regular schedule. I could wake up at 3 p.m., but it is definitely a different world. And because if to me, at least, it feels like since I have all that freedom with the channel, the streams, that opportunity, I want to maximize it. You know what I mean? Yep. I want to be I so because I have the opportunity to be on the you know more relaxed side, less um professional because I have this opportunity to just kind of make videos willy nilly, go to bed at what any time I want to wake up whenever I want to. I try not to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like when you have the freedom, you want to do everything you can to maintain the freedom, but you're not really gonna use that freedom you know what i mean yeah yeah, i get you i get you it's it's that feeling of constantly trying to maximize the time you have because you do have it especially yeah especially in this 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 world where you know making a living out of uh, content creation and and wow and stuff it it is always you know sometimes it's like a pressure or some some sort of like anxiety it's like okay i have two hours free i can make a video i can make this i can make an edit Totally understand, man. And I, I believe this, you know, people do have probably still this stigma on, oh, you know, this is your job. You know, you're playing games, you're recording and streaming. That must have, must be like the dream job, you know, everybody, every, every I don't know, millennial wants or whatever. But um, I wouldn't minimize it, man. I, I still hold the flag. This is some hard goddamn work. And it's not like in the sense that you would carry, you know, heavy stones every day. Not in that sense, but, you know psychologically and um you know it it involves not moving too much well if you're czar you will yeah okay we can can work (laughs) something out but jerry we all know you know the the bad side effects of this you know uh other other than that you know that anxiety to maximize time or whatever it's like okay you don't get to do that much movement you don't get to like concentrate too much on yourself it's just like a constant roller coaster going up and up and up and up right that's, I think it's a lot of it's a lot of mental mental uh, strain, because when I when I look at this, I I came to the conclusion I was like kind of ju- juggling between one or two, but I think it's two main aspects of you know being a YouTube or a content creator. First of all, you're working a lot with your brain. You're actually creating stuff something from. Mm, kind of nothing but not really but also if you're sustaining yourself then it is a business because you have an activity that you want to undergo and when when you're working with your own personal time and your own personal resources and you know that you're losing them and they have to like get some back to you you're starting to think like oh my god all this is time that i'm not getting back this is time that is not invested this is time that doesn't produce anything right i could have I could have recorded an extra hour of uh, gameplay. I could have uh, edited something else or I could have done a little bit more research on something. Why, right? When you're handling your own stuff, when you're your own boss and you start to value your time and you kind of know what that means, that's when, well, obviously stress is going to come into play, but that's also when you're starting to feel the value of time, I would say. So taking too much time off is is something that maybe Uh only people who have their own business or people... Like, I, I think this is just has to do with the way your, your activity is undergone because it's all about time. Time can be in, uh, uh, used to create something, you know, in our, in our, in our area of uh, activities, basically a, a video, right? Mm-hmm. We, can, we can depict that into like what, what that means. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's like, ah, uh, I could go for an extra drive and uh, go eat out or i could do half a day's work that i know is gonna you know pro- uh, propose and obviously for people that don't do youtube don't really understand that if you take time off it doesn't just stop it kind of <laughs> decreases it kind of goes on a downward yeah. trend so yeah like what what would you what you would think i know th- this is a bad question to ask when thinking about time off but think about it like this now if you mm-hmm. do take two weeks off what do you think will happen to the videos, oh, to the I channel. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. No, 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 no. It's a scary that thought. That is where anxiety just... Yeah. Oh, my God. I, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's a legitimately scary question. I don't know what would happen. It probably would be dead in a ditch somewhere. I... <laughs> to be honest this, yeah I, I mean it's a hard question to answer i know because the algorithm yeah, it's, is weird it's, i think it's impossible to because can you could you to imagine just taking two weeks off 
just go, that's, no. that's that's a funny thing because no, i think no uh, we try we try to take we try to take uh the winter holidays off kind of mm. we still have yeah. something prepared but i think we skipped on one or two videos this season how many did we skip on uh for mocast uh, for in the, general for, for a whole podcast. channel no for a whole channel not that much since december now but i think it was uh, i think it was last year when we said okay let's just take a week off completely and we had almost yeah. nothing and our channel dropped to a point where it took us about two months to get to the uh, to the uh, point where we were before it's so it's insane. that one week is worth two months of harder work to get back to where you were okay. before that vacation. okay but let me let me add this it was so much more valuable afterwards because okay you've seen the slide down right but then you had the time to like improve on so many areas you know with the you know the video production the audio production the scheduling you know the whole concept of okay what can we do whatever i i think you know it was a good balance still so in that regard well it comes down to how you use it in the end how you well, use yeah, the time yeah well, it is it is it is scary it is for sure scary Okay. Mm -hmm. So what did you do on your free time? Me? Um, I've been playing games with guildies, actually. Uh, oh. That's really about it. And spend, trying to spend more time with, at least away from the PC, you know, uh, with the fam, maybe. Uh, well, a little bit here and there, but, you know, me and my twin both are, we do the same thing, streaming YouTube, except he doesn't do WoW. So we're both pretty busy, but we're on a very, very similar schedule, but I've been just, I don't know, just trying to take, take a breather in any way I can. Disconnected. Uh, yeah, but playing games with other guildies has definitely been one of the things I've been doing on a, a Thursday or a Sunday. That's been enjoyable. Since, you know, we were just doing prog on the Denathrius. It's just same old, same old until we finally get it. So it's been a nice breather here <laughs> and there. Sure. Did you did you try any other games? I don't know, maybe Among Us with, with the fam and stuff? Or, or Valheim? Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Among Us with the uh, guildies, we did that before Shadowlands, I think. I think so everybody we did that. Yeah. That phase. Was yeah, yeah. With that Valheim was very enjoyable until really? we got the final boss. Yeah, Valheim was really, really good. I wasn't there for majority of. I wasn't there for the um, first boss, second boss. I was there for the third boss and the last boss. Um, I was there for a lot of the farming, but not a lot of the actual like because base building one. Of, our our GM is just he does a lot of the base building back in Conan and he did a lot of base building in this game. So it just looks fantastic. Like a great Viking village with a bunch of different actually <laughs> just real pretty looking outposts. It that was a really enjoyable game. Definitely a good buy if you uh have never tried Val. Definitely oh, worth with friends. Yeah. But even solo, it's really, really good. That's definitely like one of those best like take a break from your main game kind of games. Right, but uh, speak, speaking of the the main game, Dal. Now I, I'm pretty sure you you speak your mind, you know, in, in streams and stuff, you know, about it. But now I think we had sufficient time, you know, to like kind of grasp in, you know, Shadowlands and you know what it was all about and how would you rate it so far based on what what you experienced, what you've seen. Where does it stand in your like uh, I don't know spectrum of appreciation of World of Warcraft? Shadowlands? Ah, uh, man. Okay, well, first of all, it's better than BFA. <laughs> Fuck <So> yeah. <laughs> one thing we can all agree on, yeah. it's a really good expansion. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I feel like we won't really ever know the true value of Shadowlands until we are in the next expansion, until after Shadowlands is over, right? Yeah. Because yeah. back when everybody played Legion, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. A lot of my guildies had fun, but I really couldn't tell anybody just how good Legion really was. Because prior to Legion, we had WAD. Prior to that, we had MOP. You know, MOP yeah. wasn't terrible. WAD was worse than MOP, but it was still part of like the decline, watching yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, Cataclysm into MOP, into WAD. And then we have Legion, which is like an amoeba. And it's oh. like, okay, well, it's definitely not worse, but like, where is it really? And you don't really get to see exactly how good it was in comparison until you're not in that expansion anymore. So I feel like we're not going to be able to tell exactly where Shadowlands is at. But I've been definitely enjoying it a lot. A bunch of my friends have been enjoying it. Guildies have been enjoying it a ton. The fights have been pretty enjoyable. The class stuff they've done, especially in uh, 05 recently, and some of the stuff they potentially could mm. do in 9-1 is going to be very interesting. But I've been enjoying this expansion a lot. Better than WAD. 
better than uh mop uh, uh i'd say better than uh, uh, maybe equal to mop if not better i think it's again really hard to tell if it's going to be as good as legion because legion was really really good yeah but yeah, it, i've been enjoying it this, this has been a good expansion so far i've been liking it a lot how about I, you guys it's interesting how you put it because i actually uh I, I agree obviously if you take an outside view you get a better appreciation of what you're looking at and for me it was actually the other way around with bfa and what because um, I came into retail in WAD. I used to play a lot of private servers and I was like, this, this was all shiny and all this. Oh, that's so cool, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And then when I went into it, I was like, wait a minute, that was fucking shit. What the <laughs> fuck was that? My, my first expansion was Cataclysm and I uh, every time people talk bad about Cata, I'm like, dude, that's my first expansion. Like, that was, that was my, that was like the baby mode of me playing WoW. I can never say anything bad. I did a lot of Dragon Soul Raid. Everybody just talks mad shit about that raid. <laughs> mad. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm looking back, it's like, yeah, it probably wasn't that good. But it's my <laughs> first raid. I can't say anything bad about it. You know what I mean? I can't talk bad. No, Cataclysm had a lot of good things going for it. Um, in general, <clears throat> people trash it mostly just because, as you mentioned, the, the Dragon Soul, it was a long-ass patch. But mm -hmm. if you think about it in terms of PvP, for me at least, and a lot of like old-school PvPers tend to agree with this, it was among one of the best balance. It was one of the few expansions where you could do well as triple DPS. Mm -hmm. And I think Cataclysm was sort of like the least bursty expansion out of them. I don't know if you remember this. Cataclysm had its burst comps, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing could have happened two seconds dead. You know what I mean? Do you, do you remember mm -hmm. that? I think I always look fondly to that because I, as much as I do love like the fast-paced bursty stuff, there was some element of prepping, strategizing, you know, uh, chess playing in, in that type of uh, uh, gameplay back in Kata that, you know, it's a, I, you know if, you, if you ask, you know, Peekaboo, if you ask, I don't know, uh, Ven, uh, you know, people who, who were around the back then, Zico, everybody will tend to say that, man, I don't know, Cataclysm had this weird interesting balance with all with a lot of specs well except enhancement shaman who people who play enhancement shaman 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 enhancement shamans didn't really do too good i remember like the, the biggest enhancement shaman in kata was like 1800 or something because they mm. were that bad but generally the other ones were, were really good it's interesting that you mentioned that you kind of like it more or even equal to mop um mop was i think mop was kind of like a misconception for a lot of people because everybody memed it being the panda expansion the yeah, casual expansion me i memed it so hard like it would be, <laughs> what is it high school lunch table just making just ripping on it because it has kung fu, panda kung fu panda panda it, you know shit. what i mean yeah. yeah everybody did it was just just everybody thought the same thing because everybody thought it was a joke until you actually play it yep uh because I actually, because I, I, I didn't play mob for all aspects. I only played it just for PvP. So I can't yeah. really say much about the raiding or the dungeons or any of that sort. Nope. Um, I remember it had what? The last raid was like one of the longest patches in a yeah. very, very long while. Was it a year and something? A year and a half? Something like that. Yeah, I think that sours a lot of the experience of people and Mr. Pandarium. But in terms of PvP, I remember that one being kind of good. Yeah, um, I well, like among the best. Every spec was viable. Yep, yep. That was the, the that was a every spec is viable. What is this sorcery you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, right. No, no. It's it's generally agreed upon that uh, uh, Mop kind of had you know like uh, the best class design and balance. Mm -hmm. You know, Kara didn't have like the best class design, but it had good balance. Mop had it all in this term, yeah. at least in PvP. I don't really know yeah. what happened in PvE. So that was the, that was pretty good. Uh, you 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 played combat rogue back then too, right? Because that was yeah, like oh a, yeah. The That's main... when it started, man. That's when <laughs> Dalaran started. Oh, Miss yeah. Pandaria, eight second kidney, red buff, shadow blades, killing spree. Oh yeah, yeah I was the good so old days. bad at the game, dude. I was so bad at the game. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, look at look at back through old footage of uh, yeah. just how much raw damage combat rogue could could do if you played it right. Uh, I'm, I was looking back, I, I forgot, it was like a year or two ago, I was looking back at my mob footage, and I was like, <laughs> if only I, I was actually halfway <laughs> decent back then. You could do so much with it. Yeah. There was so much potential. Yeah, but and it was just, I threw it all away, because I was just so bad at the game. I mean, come on, man, everybody has their, you know, point uh, of that's, starting. That's when you look back like that. It's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> 
Well, you, you say combat was potent in MOP. You, you have to remember it. I know we touched upon this, you know, in previous episodes. Dude, combat in WAD was the shit. Oh, yeah. I no, mean, that was the broken was machine. was something silly. That was just... <laughs> It was just I love fa- rolling your face on a keyboard, spamming Sinister Strike. Just- <laughs> yeah. Flame, do you know how it worked? I think I, I told you. Vaguely, oh. like I have okay. touched Apart from the, what was it, 12 second kidney, was it? Oh no, my no, no, god, no, no, say no so more. They, Get the fuck. No, so- yeah. <laughs> that, that worked yeah. in Arena, 12 second CC? No, no, not 12, 9 seconds, I believe it was. Of was course, because you, 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 you <laughs> draw the line at 10, right? <laughs> It was not 10, it was not overpowered, it was just 9 seconds. No, it, so it, it was at some point, I think, 12 seconds, because you had it. the 8 second kidney, and then you had this fun, tal- uh, fun depending <laughs> if you were the rogue or somebody attacked by the rogue, uh, what is it, shadowy, shadow clone, I think. Basically, I think so, what yeah. it would do is for 8 seconds, it would just watch what you're doing, and then replicate your ability. Oh, so yeah, if it yeah. watched you press reveal and strike kidney shot, it would capture that, so then after your full 8 second kidney, it would hit the enemy with the reveal and strike, full 5 cone point kidney shot, so your 8 second stun into its 4 second stun, 12 seconds of just, you just not can't play the game, <laughs> until they uh, nerfed it, where all rogues yeah. would do then, is it would go for a kidney shot, vanish cheap shot, and vanish gave you 5 combo points, so you just go for an eviscerate, and then you would have a, what is it, 3DR, 5, was it, I guess a 1.5 combo point kidney. Yeah. So you still had a really long, like, stun chain. It was just really silly. It was broken, Really man. dumb. Roll your face on a keyboard. Yeah, but it was, was very, very Was fun. it, was it, it was convoked them or? Convo- nah, it wasn't convoked them. I'm sorry. No, convoked <laughs> convoke them means you can die in two seconds. Combat rogues didn't have that in two seconds. They could kill you fast, but not two seconds. Because yeah. they had to, combat rogues had to go through the buffs. You had to like spam your sinister strike and stuff. You got to you did the yeah. yellow buff, and once it's, you got it's a to little the bit buff. of a ramp, but it was so easy though. Yeah, like, I mean, you just, you just spam so shit. <laughs> dude, just it was a couple. Spam one button that said, "Dude, yeah. red buff." I was kind of hoping uh, since above the red buff legendary, because that's a legendary now in yeah. Um, yeah. Shadowlands. I was hoping that that one would become really good. I don't think it's strong enough, but nah. maybe one day. Uh, well, I mean, I really loved it as much as you know, uh, simplistic it was. I felt at that time, it was combat rogue in in Wad was similar to how Demon Hunter felt in in Legion and BFA. I don't know what was with Shadowlands. It's like easy easy to do a lot of damage with yeah. very little ways to be punished. That was that was combat rogue back, back in yeah. Wad. And I loved it. I fucking loved it, man. <laughs> it was so much fun. And watching like Dal and, and them boys, because I think Dal was. I don't know if the only, but I'm pretty sure there were quite a few people who played combat because sub was still a very good thing, even in, in yeah. you know, in WAD and stuff, you know, high rate, super high rate players always choose sub. But when you saw how much fun combat was and, and, and you know, you got that alternative, okay, just be silly, man, and do shit. It was mm-hmm. good times. Good yeah. times, good times. But, okay, um, have you still been, did you start at Shadowlands with Outlaw Rogue? Because I know you dabbled in much more specs, obviously. But was what was your like your, your impression moving into Shadowlands on Outlaw? Because you were main out, Outlaw for a long time. Like going from BFA to Shadowlands Outlaw. Yeah, uh, uh, they made it better. I like I like the slice and dice. I think it's I think it's one of the better things. I uh, so this slice and dice. You guys play rogues, right? Yeah, have I do. Yeah, a rogue, a rogue. You guys have you made a rogue guide yet? I, Working or, on it, working on the outlaw. I, I made the sub rogue, uh, and working okay. on the outlaw. I I got I got my my research because I want to know your your opinion, and we can talk mm-hmm. about it a little bit. Yeah, how do you guys feel about slice and ice without returning? Uh, I don't mind it. Uh, I think it's like the the best option it, uh, that can work for outlaw. I don't feel it because uh, this is the thing. Sub has the passive right, uh, mm-hmm. was a premeditation, so you don't even want to worry about about it. Assassination. Mm-hmm. I haven't played it in Shadowlands. But slice and dice try. It's a lot of fun. Nine uh, five. One of the best changes I've done for it. Definitely really? give it a go. All right, mm-hmm. all right. It's on the on the Make list. Make the Doom Blade Lego. I think you guys will have a lot of fun with it. Or if you have <laughs> the crit, that, that's all you need. You can actually make some plays. Oh it's shit! It's a lot of fun. Oh, definitely shit. recommend it. I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but um, <laughs> I think like things like slice and dice, dude. If you ask me, mm-hmm. those for me personally are part of what made Rogue what it was back in the day, because that was something you yeah. had to put on and track and become useful it isn't that useful for sub 
I don't know if it's useful for for a SAS, but man, does it does it come? I mean, you you have to fucking have that slice and dice up on Outlaw, and I think that's mm-hmm. cool because it's impactful. That that's yeah, my so, take on it. So, one of the things they've done for Outlaw is the broad slice and dice back, which that together with roll the bones mechanic, I thought personally was one of the best changes. I've talked well, to a lot of the guys on the Rogue Discord, and there was quite a lot of people that didn't really like slice and ice returning nah, because no. well, the argument is well it's just a buff you maintain it doesn't really bring anything interesting to the table you just maintain it and that's all you do it's just extra busy work but i feel like it adds the consistency because auto attacks is quite a bit of your damage yeah prior to this auto attacks were pretty big and now with slice and ice they're even bigger having slice and ice and roll the bones i feel like because slice and ice is basically a grand melee buff so essentially as outlay you have two buffs in a row or two buffs rolling at the same time yeah. So I felt like that made it more consistent. So you take, uh, you still have the RNG element of, oh, you got random buffs, but you always have slice and ice to back you up. So you, your swings between like good buff, bad buff are not nearly as bad. Oh man, um, I, I never thought about it like that. Like that. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, Blade Flurry, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, oh, there's too. no two charges, but cooldown reduction is something we play into. So oh, the yeah. more calm points you get through, you can basically constantly have it up. And it makes certain buffs like True Bearing just a lot more valuable, where normally yep. True Bearing was like kind of a decent buff, but now the cooldown reduction is a lot more important. It becomes a much better buff, so yep. that makes one of the worst buffs better. So when you have like that just one buff, that one becomes one of the better ones. Between the Ice Change, I kind of like, because I, I think everybody enjoyed just being able to stun things left and right as Outlaw and free yeah, hold all the time just cool, yeah. nobody's yeah. getting to play <laughs> but it sucked on sanguine weeks where you're just going for you between the eyes and then they're just stunned in sanguine healing to full and you're like <laughs> yes. that's my fault my bad guys so yeah i think it's good that they uh, offset that to a kidney shot because you have more control it's better for pvp i think so because you don't no longer have this stun that's one yeah. second shorter than a normal kidney so it just normalizes the spec to be like the other rogues um and then the, the crit buff that they added with it i think is also pretty good it just makes your stats a little bit i personally liked it some people don't but i i personally enjoyed it in terms of going from bfa to shadowlands i think they improved on the spec of what it already does well yeah. we, i feel like rogues didn't get the most updates in comparison to some of the other classes um like we didn't get a complete shadow priest re- rework uh oh, with, yeah. you know bringing back dp and then changing out how void form which i thought was great i actually enjoyed that a lot but the I per to me per I don't speak for everybody, but to me personally, I like what they did with Outlaw going from uh BFA to this expansion. Poisons are back, that's always good. Oh, yeah. Soft yeah. and dagger yeah. a lot more fun. <laughs> Cooldown reduction is more of a thing. Basically, I, I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Long story short, <laughs> I like it. I think so. Overall, I, I agree, agree with everything you said. Uh I mm-hmm. I do have a disappointment though. And I think okay. it's such a wasted opportunity. Um the talent role with Dreadblades and uh, what was it? The, the, the one with roll, it has Dreadblades and the one with roll the bones. I think that they, they missed an opportunity there because Dreadblades yeah. in Legion was such an iconic thing to have. And we said, oh my God, Dreadblades is back. The fucking burst. Mm-hmm. Oh, not quite. Still alacrity all yeah. the way, like we had in Legion, like we had in BFA. Um, I, I just feel they, they had an opportunity to like make that role more competitive and not always fucking go with alacrity. It could be. Yeah. It's good, but it's not that interesting. You just, you know, passive haste buff, boom, 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 boom ramp it up. It's all good. When you yeah. when you when you see a thing like dread blades right next to it, it's like, oh, I want to use that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, I feel, uh, and I wanted like to 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 get your mind on this. Uh, you know, doing the research and play play testing, play testing outlaw and stuff. I feel at this point, outlaw rogue is the most complex spec out of the three. What do you think about that? And it wasn't always like this. What would you say, where do you say, what would you say the complexity lies in the spec in comparison to like sub? Or um, uh, I, I think, would say assassination as well, but uh, um, uh, I know that you've done a guide on, you said yourself, you've done a guide on no. sub, but in terms of like, what do you? What parts of it do you think are are like add to make it more the most complex? Well, that's the thing. First, yeah, first of all, there's like mm-hmm. maintenance of buffs 
which you have to constantly be aware of and make them constant. And that's not nothing. Nothing like that is on, on subtlety. Of course, you uh, you know you, you can you can talk about uh, your shadow dance reduction or whatever, but it's not nothing. No buffs need to be maintained as an outlaw. You need to constantly get your roll, proper rolled bones. You have to know when to roll because if you have good buffs, you don't need to like go into that. So you have to be aware of that. Then there's slice and dice. Then there's between the eyes on your main target, right? Um, and then. There's this whole concept of, you know, uh, making the workaround to play your class based on the cooldown reduction it evolves around, which is something people cannot really get used to, me included, because I sometimes, when playing it, uh, I don't notice, right? Even, you know, I, with weak rush, I don't notice. My blade fury is back up. Oh shit, my general rush is back up. Plus the openers, I feel the openers are one of the most complex I've ever seen. Just because they're so dependent on what type of buffs you have. That's another thing. And this added much more in-depth stuff for me, at least, when compared to, to, to Subtlety. I haven't played Assassination in Shadowlands, but when compared to Subtlety, which is not as you expect. Yeah, we'll play well, well, well. Assass. You have to play Assass. It's well, so fun. Well, we'll do. But I'm really curious now. It's like, because I felt in BFA, Outlaw wasn't that much of a hard spec to like master. It felt... I mean, we can talk about corruptions if you're unsure, but overall, I feel right now with uh, the maintenance of all the buffs and all of the cooldown reduction and, you know, the, the talent traces and the legendary, I don't know, man, I'm talking about Solari, obviously. Everything yeah. feels much more in-depth, and I definitely felt it because I, I mean, the Feral so far, that isn't easy either, but mm -hmm. Feral, Sub, combat, uh, Outlaw... Outlaw feels the most complex. I, I still cannot grasp it fully. I feel like I'm missing this. Oh my god! Oh, I I, I dropped my roll the bones. Oh shit! I dropped my slice and dice. Oh my god! Between the eyes and all of that shit. That's why. Yeah. I, I now that you put it in in, in uh, like out of the context, I can see from your perspective like how it feels. I guess you are right. Now that between the eyes is a debuff you maintain slice oh, yeah. and dice and roll the bones. That is things you gotta maintain now. Yeah, uh, and, and Blade Fury in AoE too. That's four. Blade Fury, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't, the way that I approach Outlaw, and I guess the way that I've always viewed it is like with a spec. If I have any buttons that are available, just press them. Like Adrenaline Rush, don't hold it. Just press it every single sure. time. And just, I guess, constantly as I'm going through my rotation, I have my uh, Adrenaline Rush bound to middle mouse. On my mouse and as i'm just going through my rotation sometimes i just keep hitting middle mouse just in case there's an adrenaline rush up and running <laughs> so, so actually maybe that so maybe that's how i approach it is just i'm just constantly pressing my abilities in case things are back up just yeah. to put it on cooldown asap because you're going to get the cooldown reduction anyway so true. Yeah. maybe so maybe it's just I, I i have it inherently somewhere like in the back of my brain just like I don't have to think about a drone rush since my hands are already pressing it. I'm trying to activate it constantly. So maybe it's like offsets one less thing for me to manage. Yeah. So I guess when you put it like that, yeah, it is one of the more uh, complex specs. But I feel like it's more about finding those, finding little things like, I guess the, the easiest way that I would look at it is if you are trying to like really get into the depth of Outlaw, it's just like, press abilities because they're off cooldown just press yeah. immediately so it's between the cool. eyes that's up press it immediately blade flurry more than one target press it immediately don't think about how to weave into it just put them on cooldown asap and as soon as they come back put them on cooldown again as for all the bones of size and ice i feel like you could because i don't use weak auras but i'm pretty sure this is where and me, me and you can talk later about like what buffs i maintain and you can check back with the other guys over at the rogue discord i don't know who you guys would be talking about not missler no, we're talking about missler, missler? Yeah, okay yeah. missler cool is dude. pretty good yeah. yeah uh guy is also really good to talk to him uh yeah. forever guy I, I mean him he he's usually just a font of knowledge when it comes to outlaw so if you want to oh yeah chat oh, yeah. with him too you could definitely can but yeah, if you guys got questions like in terms of what I do, I can give you guys my notes and you can compare with their notes. But pretty sure you can use like a weak art to figure out which buffs are your best. So those are the buffs you don't re-roll. And it's like, it's like it's, it will be simple things like five pound points. Okay, slice and So I have it. Yes or no. Is it eight seconds before it's running out or longer? Yeah, but okay, need to yeah. refresh it. Kind of. Yeah, it'll be, I guess it'll be like little adjustment because I, I played the specs since like legion so i guess there's just some things that are just inherently baked into my brain sure when it comes to outlaw and stuff but 
Yeah, I guess that's the only way, the only approach I would have for like a new player really trying to max it is put things in cooldown all the time. Oh yeah, maybe that'll be helpful for you guys. That's the main idea, sure. Because like to get into like the proper role of it, it's don't be afraid to use your abilities. Because this Mm -hmm. is how Outlaw plays. You have so so much fast access as compared to any other spec. All of your abilities come out way faster. For me, it's still a matter of keeping track of everything and making sure uh, everything is up. And uh, you know, uh, sometimes I play with Ghostly Strike in uh in mm-hmm. raids right oh, that no, no, also no, no. i don't play ghost of strike i don't play ghost of strike <laughs> I, I can imagine I, it that seems being, good feeling a little bit complex if you add ghost of strike <laughs> i don't know what about that ability i just don't like it oh, it's, it's, i'm a huge fan of quick draw maybe that would it be, is fun yeah <laughs> I would just go quick draw. It's yeah, more fun. One less thing to bounce. I can totally see if you're trying to play okay, hold on. Are you playing Ghost of Strike with a mark for death? Yeah. Into single no yeah. wonder <laughs> play yeah. deeper strat and play yeah. quick draw your life will be much easier and you won't I, have uh, as as so, much of a dps like oh yeah in my uh, opinion i get you i get, I, I wanted to play like all the builds because you know talking to missler uh i wanted yeah. to play everything uh just to like you know test it out and make the see the feel of it right because mm-hmm. i i've oh, totally forgot oh there's also mark for death which is you know really good if you until you like you know openers you know get your slice and dice uh, slice and dice yeah. up one less thing to worry about but then it comes back where do you use it uh you know on cooldown of course but you know don't get uh, uh combo point capped and stuff i don't know man it yeah. just it just overall uh it felt much more complex than than anything i've tried uh in terms of melee so far and I'm still, yeah still i forgot about ghost to strike and mark for death on single target that's been a new thing and uh-huh I, okay let me give you what okay so now that i understand what is the build that you tried for outlaw <laughs> i can totally see why you say it's complex now imagine this. This is at some point during the alpha and the beta. This is how you would play Outlaw. So there was a conduit that made Blade Flurry give you extra mastery. So your mastery be- would become better. So yeah. you basically would go to strike on a boss, mark for death, but also maintain Blade Flurry on single target. Get the and fuck imagine out. <laughs> your rotation with Blade Flurry on single target because it gives you mastery. Now that was just like a piano spec. Like you, some people don't enjoy playing a piano spec because there's just so many abilities on your yeah. keys. And that was like the most like oh, big yeah. brain. You cannot move. You can't do mechanics. I know. I know. Move, execute properly. Now that I understand that you're playing Ghost of Strike and Mark for Death, I can totally see why. Had to yes, try it. it yeah. Okay. So I agree with you then. Outlet definitely can be a really complex spec with a lot of things going on. <laughs> but I feel like 20 extra DPS is just not what chasing sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, yeah. It was just a matter of <laughs> testing for, for the guide, you know, because I wanted to showcase, yeah. you know, that build and that build and then so on and so forth because eventually I switched, you know, to deeper stratagem and quick mm-hmm. draw, you know, which I always love. Oh, and it much, becomes much a smoother breeze. <laughs> For sure. Hey, hey, Flame, you're still there, man? Yeah, I'm just listening. I'm just taking it all I'm in. I'm sorry, man. I, I geeked out about Outlook. My, my, my Rogue is still level 50. It's okay. <laughs> when you play Enhancement, Shaman, yeah, that, that's that, a piano fucking I, I, I was thinking That's well, a fun I one. I love me some Enhanced, dude. We can sh- talk shop about Enhanced all day if you want to play. Uh, <laughs> well, I haven't, I, I haven't played it in, uh, in PvP, but as far as PvE was concerned, uh, Enhancement felt horrible until I actually got weapons. And I've never felt uh, horrible on a melee until uh, until I got weapons, until I actually played enhancement. And it was sad to see uh, week after week, uh, seeing my DPS just fall lower, lower, lower on the minerals just because I was not. I remember that <laughs> poor guy. Oh, that was that was so depressing. It's like I was perfecting <laughs> my rotation. Like I and it feels oh, me too. enhancement enhancement is is an interesting spec to master because at least in PV, I can imagine the complexity that we might have in arenas. But at least in PV, when it comes to enhancement, is you have a very strict priority rotation and a couple of decisions that you have to make based on whether you whether or not you have Doom Wounds out or not. Um, and if you mess up one global, because everything is on a gl- is has cooldown, <laughs> like you can just end up with like two to three seconds of no buttons able to press. You're just like mailing. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. vanilla. I remember this. Yeah, <laughs> or there. you can uh, you can reach a point where you have to press three buttons at once, which is obviously not possible. So it was fun to uh, to master it, and I, I I'm happy with how I progressed all the, up until we we got our curve because that's how much we rated on. Um, 
but uh, it felt like it got shafted a little bit. And when I saw the elemental buffs, like, come on, man. How can you buff elemental to almost double its damage or whatever it's doing right now? But in Hasbro, who's always below elemental, is still getting dick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Although but it's, it's scale it's, much better in Fugitiers. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a fun spec. And I can see, because we also like to do PvP on the side, I can see it being very interesting in PvP. It's so fast-paced and so responsive. It's amazing. I just... I don't think Astral Shift is enough, and making it do stupid healing with Healing Surge. Oh my god, the I healing mean, is ridiculous, I mean, it's man. fun, but yeah. I mean, is that really the spec that you want to play? Why not just play Resto? Uh, and and, well, and you want to smash people with hammers. Why Why do I care that I can one like lay on hands every 10 seconds or whatever? Get yeah, so yeah. mad. <laughs> like, I, I, think, I, I think Tickle was pretty happy about the elemental buffs. Yeah, I think I can mainly <laughs> play in elemental buffs. When I look at uh, enhanced, like, Shaman PvP videos, I inadvertently come to Tickle uh, 99% of the time. All right, all right. Tickle is a great guy. So that we introduced kind of freestyle, um, a new segment in this podcast. It's called the, the primary school questions. You know, the, the little <laughs> questions you get to, to write down. In, the the Q&A the section end of your journal, you know, stupid ass questions. So here it goes. Okay. Um, Dal, what's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. You know, I don't watch enough movies. Uh, I haven't watched movies. And I don't watch enough movies to get like a good one. Must be. Can be Probably. something from your childhood or anything. You know, something that really marked your ass. Like, oh yeah, man, I remember that shit. That shit was good. Uh, there was a lot of good ones, actually. Uh, I recently rewatched the Star Wars movie, so I'd have to put those. But you know what? Ooh. One movie jumps out at me. Uh. I think it was called District 9. Oh, District Remember Nine. That one? Oh, yeah, that yeah. was the sci-fi thing, right? With the, with... Yeah, with the it was like the bug aliens thing. Yeah, that, that was cool. And, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that one. I don't know why that one jumps out at me, but I remember thinking you know, going into that movie thinking like, oh, I don't even know if I'm gonna like it, and I was surprised. It was yeah. like one of those movies that made me like question things in terms of like <laughs> life. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh it's yeah. Like, I, I, so we look at the aliens and the monsters, but are we really the monsters? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah that, that I guess flip. that would be the one. Jump District Nine. District oh. Nine. Yeah. You should reason. watch it too, Flame. Yeah, it's, I actually it's, skipped, yeah. Uh, skipped on that one. It's really. I mean, it, it wasn't that popular. I think I watched it on HBO a couple of years back, and I kind of fell in love with it. It was in such a different style. So yeah. kudos, man. District Nine, definitely. Okay. Um, favorite TV series of all time, or most memorable. Oh, man, it's been so long since I... I think, you know, this way you would say something like, you know, Game of Thrones or something Hello. like that. <laughs> but hey man, that's I would have good. to say Scrubs. I think Scrubs, Scrubs. was the last good thing that Ooh. was on television. Scrubs was really funny. So that's an old school. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. baby Scrubs. All uh, right. Yeah, that, was, that was an interesting show where they added the weird dynamic between the two, uh, the protagonist and, uh, and Turk. I really like the, mm -hmm. the, the, the quirkiness that they added and the fact that they can kind of mesh that with a more... Some of the more serious approaches to to the plot of the show. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We we got it. Okay. Let me ask you this: favorite mm -hmm. um, musical artist or band of all time, or the most you listen to, or something. Uh, nowadays, I just kind of listen to uh, anything electronic. You know, EDM, chill. Uh, really, a lot of like name, no names. Attached right. to the songs. It's more like I have a bunch of songs that I like, but there's no real artists that I come back to over and over. Except recently, I figured out that I really like Fox Stevenson. I really like his music. Fox I end Stevenson. up listening Don't know. quite a bit. Like from, it usually comes down to it's like it's a channel called Liquid City or Liquid City. I don't I don't really know, but they usually have like drum and bass in them, and they usually ah, feature I Fox Stevenson a lot and. I really like some of the sound that he puts in his uh, songs. I, I I would say that would be. I feel like I should name one of the bands I used to listen to like back in the day, like oh, back yeah. during high school, like some like Three Days Grace or something. But I'd say <laughs> I've recently Three Days Grace, <laughs> like All the right. old school Adam Gontier style. But um, I'd probably say Fox Stevenson nowadays. Yeah, definitely. Okay, because uh, I was going to ask you. Okay, so uh, maybe in the recent stuff, but if there was like a a concert that you would be invited for free to sit in the front, you know, with some space mm -hmm. around to not be like jumped up and say, what, what would that concert be? What band would it be, you know, to show up at that concert? Uh, any band? Oh, man. Uh, or artist. Uh, hmm. I don't know, actually. Probably 30 Seconds to Mars. They were really good. 
30 seconds to Mars. Okay, baby. I'm because I'm always like when it comes to music and shit, you know, I'm always curious. So uh yeah, I gotta, I gotta get Mars this. were really interactive with the crowd when I saw him once. Uh and then we actually uh because so basically the chicken spaghetti was like kind of far out. And there was a uh, a girl walking around trying, I guess there were some tickets in the mosh pit that or I guess kind of <laughs> like the mosh pit or whatever, but like close to the stage that no one got. Yeah. So we, uh, it was me, my twin, and my friend, and we basically got th uh, the th three free tickets to, you know, up close yeah. to the stage, and they were really interactive with the crowd. I'd probably say yeah. Okay. Thirty seconds. All right. Thirty seconds to Mars. Band, there's probably other bands out there that I could have named, but that's the only one that jumps out. Hey happening. man, the one that comes first, you know, that's the most important one. Don't let the brain process it too much. Okay. Um, favorite content creator or creators of all time. My dudes, Flame Mercy. Oh, this shut up, man. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has to be like, you no, know, for, for a big, but big... But you guys do a lot of good work. I really like the videos you guys put up. The guides are really... Uh, Appreciate really, it, man. Uh, informative in terms of, like, getting new players to uh, learn... Uh, yeah, that, that's what we try to do. Because, yeah, yeah you, I really like the approach you guys have. Um, but you, if man. I had to name, like... One that I've been that's like a non wow, probably MF Pally time. I've been watching him a bit, but he did play some Ooh. wow at some point, yeah, I yeah. right? Because a little was, bit, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. him from the Heroes of the Storm days, yeah. He used yeah. to do Heroes a lot of the Storm Dark Souls, is what I was used to uh, watch him play. Dark a lot. Souls, yeah. Uh, you know, he played Divinity, he played Dark Souls, he's playing uh, a bunch of uh, roguelikes nowadays. But yeah, I don't, I don't know why, it's just the personality. Uh, really I don't, cool. not, I don't even play that much Heroes of the Storm. I just like watching the guy. I don't know. I think he has a chill personality, like uh, something something that I, when when I when I used to watch him for like a little bit of a break from uh, from the mall. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, all right. So the most corniest question now: What's your favorite color, Dad? Uh, probably be blue. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna make a fucking statistic to see how many people answer blue because it's, yeah. it's just like <laughs> I saw the shirt on you. It's like okay, if I'm gonna go with the color question, let's go. I'm gonna go with blue. All right, my man. That was that, that. That was super cool. I think we could have like made this a fucking five hour podcast talking about rogues and wow. Because uh, mm -hmm. we can, I think we can really geek out. Uh, oh, yeah. on, on this shit for for sure. Uh, I'd listen to that shit. Yeah, you were quite quite uh, steady and calm over there. Didn't didn't get. Yeah, man, into I always always geek out over the years of wall that I missed. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, but the, that's the thing, right? Uh, it, it's I think overall it's a good time. Uh, a better time for for wow uh, at least when come coming from from bfa obviously it's easier to to make that that remark um i just wanted like but getting back to wow a little bit before we, we close it off man um you you, that, you saw blisk online right um yeah in, in your humble opinion my man how much time do you think it will take for them to release 9.1 oh that's a good question uh some some people have said that it's probably going to be really delayed and some people said wait we're getting these patches so much earlier than expected because someone said we got 905 very very quickly that's a good right. question i have no idea i don't really know how i guess it all depends how does blizzard have their shit together when it comes to you know this expansion because of you know they had to delay shadowlands which was probably a good move yes, you know, make sure it's so polished and we're not living in the you know still not the you know back to the same normal normal times you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. uh with the with the world and whatnot yeah. and i'll leave it at that yeah. uh, so this video gets monetized <laughs> but um <laughs> you know, the man knows, he knows. Uh, it's like he does youtube but, uh, <laughs> but uh yeah um i don't know i i, I want to say that it's, i i don't want to say it's going to be delayed but i don't think we uh, we're going to get it early I don't know exactly how many months it would be because 905 came out just now. So I think maybe a month and a a month or a month and a half, I think would be a normal timeline. I really don't know. Like it was a time if, if we are in a normal timeline. Yeah. I think uh, if, you, if you think about it, like in, in, in past BlizzCons, when they announced the new patch, you would generally see gameplay footage, you know, and uh, yeah. a, a lot more, you know, stuff. That's actually. To Actually, yeah, that, now that you said it, there wasn't any game. It was, footage. It was a screenshot, I, I, man. I, Fuck. <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, they also didn't talk about... Uh, one other thing that was interesting, and I guess I forgot about it until you mentioned there was no screenshots, 
They also weren't anything about conduits. They said they want to do more with yeah. conduits. Yeah. But they want to get a lot of the community feedback. That was right. interesting. That, so was, that was the, the beta approach, I feel like, where they were super open to what we had to say. Uh, yeah. I, 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 we, we could be, now that uh, that's been established, but we probably, I don't even know. I, well, think, if you think are about we it. Are have a delayed? Are we not? I guess it depends when it goes on PTR, then we'll know, right? Yeah. Um, well, if you I, think about yeah. it, was it BlizzCon 2019? Just before we got uh seven one and seven one five, and they talked a little bit about seven two, right? With uh, you you mean eight? Oh eight two, <laughs> all right. Uh, with with Najatar and everything, and they had I think they had as much information about nine point one now as they had about eight point two then. Uh, like nah, a nah, couple nah. of screenshots, some models, that was some that, that wasn't that wasn't it because uh, uh, in twenty nineteen they talked about uh, eight point three man. Uh, there was the twenty eighteen then. Uh, it wasn't at BlizzCon 2018, it was at the beginning of 2019 when they did, you know, Ian with Josh did these... Yeah, they did the Dev, uh, Dev Q&A. Yeah, and they had this presentation about, you know, uh, Rise of Ajara right. and all, I yeah, remember yeah, that yeah. shit. But even oh. when they did that, they had super, you know... They had the zones, yeah, they had the... And footage, the... man, and there was a lot. Now, and, and they'll, they'll uh, underline it, it was like, listen... We don't want to jump to conclusions regarding legendaries and conduits. We really want to know what you guys think. And that with a screenshot and a bunch of other things. Oh, and then there's the raid Silvanas boss and boss. And guys, okay, see you later. What? Now, that was that was really cool. I mean, uh, th and th I'm curious to know, to know what you think about this, Dell, as well. So from um, from a developer perspective and from somebody that uh, you, you dabble yourself into the spec and how it performs and how, uh, how it plays from... BFA to beta to how it is now. What do you think of their new attitude towards, you know, okay, shit just takes longer to do, but chances are that they might actually come well. It's kind of, it feels like an attempt to go back to how they used to be. It's like, we'll have it ready when it's ready. How do you think about, about all that? Does that give you like any hopes of, uh, of a better, better wall and better blizzard in the future? Stuff like that. Well, I'm taking time with the game. Yeah, that's, I mean, with them originally delaying Shadowlands, I remember some people were unhappy, but it was good that they did. And then Shadowlands came out in the state that it did, where it was just super, super fun. If they do have to delay this patch, uh, or, you know, you know, it's ready when it'll be ready, if they go back to that methodology, I don't think that'll be a bad methodology. It might seem sucky in the short term, because it means, oh, I have to be playing, you know, the current patch 905 a little bit longer, I feel like you've already done everything. But in the long term, I think it would have it will have a better patch and a better game with more attention. And yep. I guess it would be like it would be a good step for long term. It might not be something you will see in nine one, but if nine one is solid, and then let's say nine two is solid, or nine three, nine four, if all of them are really really solid, that would be really good because I think it would just give players like kind of like a roadmap of okay, this is kind of the direction the Blizzard is heading. They're heading back to that old, yeah. it'll, it, it'll be ready when it'll be ready. So in yeah. short term, I don't think it'll be good gains. Um, or at least it won't feel good from a player perspective. Because it's like, well, I'd be doing Denathrius <laughs> more times. I'm kind of tired of him. I mean, he's a great, great, great actor, great voice line delivery. But like, like know, doing right? the same boss over and over, it'll just be kind of stale. And it's a great but fight. In the long but, term, yeah. it'll be, yeah, good, really good on Mythic. Really, really, so enjoyable on Mythic. So that's 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 what I'm thinking of because uh, we've been on the side of like oh my god this patch is taking way too long I'm getting bored of WoW I'm stopping my subscription yeah. I'm coming back so we've been there and we've been on the other side of like where things just come out really quick and they're kind of shit and right now we yeah, still have yeah. bugs where oh my god I actually pulled the pack that was like all the way over there but I'm all the way over here like what's <laughs> going on right um, mm -hmm. so it's it's nice that they're, they're taking their time so of of the two worlds I personally would lean towards okay take a take a little bit longer and and do the shit properly than trying to rush yeah. things because if you, I think if you remember was it in Legion when they said oh we want to do like a new thing every year or every year and a half or something like that like a new expansion. But was yeah, it prior that, to that fallout? Yeah. That fallout. Yeah, that, that didn't, I don't think that lasted the day. They could have with the disaster that BFA was because basically BFA was trying to fix as right traits. They they couldn't stick to. Oh yeah, the whole expansion yeah. of those uh, yeah. as fix it because it was so gobbled cobbled together. <laughs> that's that's the yeah. thing, man. Now, there's no. I, I even believe that that initial idea or plan that they had back then was 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 totally you know 
we wrong. Call it the Call of Duty FIFA plan. Yeah, it, yeah. it smells Activision a bit, you know, just you know, <laughs> just a little bit. But that actually brings a good point. Battle for Azeroth the whole time was playing catch up, right? With the Azerites and the essences yep, yep. and then cloaks, yep. building upon it. Shadowlands doesn't have to do that. Yeah. Very true. Very Soul true. Soulbinds and legendaries work. Like, yeah, some people still feel like, and you know, there could be more done with the condu- covenants and conduits, but we don't have people swapping them every single week, right? Yeah, and the differences so aren't actually, that big. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, they work. It's a system that could be expanded on, but I don't think expansion would be nearly as bad as like having to redo it and add on to it all together. So maybe they will delay it, but they already have a pretty working system now, so maybe it wouldn't take nearly as much. Hopefully, to guarantee yeah. a good nine one because they don't have to redo everything all the time. I, don't know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. But if they do delay it, I do agree with you guys. Like, if they have to, you know, delay things to the next patch and future patches, and if I guess an expansion after this one, because it's probably going to be a one after this one, if they have to delay it to make it good, I am on board with that. <laughs> I think we all are. Guys. Yeah. Don't we all are. Yeah. All right, boys and gals, I think this hits the mark for today. As I said, we could go for hours and hours and talk shop about all of this shit. But, you know, the man's got a schedule. You know, we got to get back home, too. So, once again, Dalaran Gaming, thank you so much for joining for the thank third goddamn much. time. Always a pleasure having your ass around here. Now, make sure yeah, you catch me. <laughs> the good old boy at... Uh, look at the links over there. Oh, over, over, yonder, over yonder. You should definitely catch his Twitch as well because uh, he has one of the most Twitch, man. I don't, I don't stream it's on YouTube. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but he's stream. I just wanted to say stream. It's been a long day. Ignore the Twitch part. Yeah. Uh, just hit me up on YouTube. I stream yeah. on YouTube. He's, uh, he, he'll be streaming on YouTube for, for a couple of years now. For so, uh, it's, couple, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's the thing, right? Because everybody we get around here, everybody has a Twitch. I think you're I think the only one who, uh, you know, kept the gun strong for, for the YouTube streaming. So, you know, consistency, baby. Keep it up. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. All right, uh, that being said, we shall uh, close it off with a, a big and warm thank you to everybody who has been watching or listening, um, you know, youtube.com slash Marcelian Online, yep. or you can search us on iTunes, Apple, Spotify, Spotify and all that good stuff. Spotify, you can find Google our Google uh, Podcasts, all the platforms, yeah. basically. Then see you next time on Take a Monday. Take care, everybody. See you next episode. Have a great week ahead. Bye-bye. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow.